Now, dear listener, you know I've talked to you a lot on the Politocrat Daily Podcast about making your own podcast. And let me tell you something. Anchor gives you the best opportunity to do that. It's free of charge. Yes, it's free. And there are lots of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your own phone or computer. How about that? And you can even add songs to your podcast from Spotify. It's really wonderful. You can do this. And it really is very easy. And Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. It can be heard on all kinds of platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make some money too. And money making is a good thing. It's everything you need in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Dear listener, dear listener, dear listener, you have to go right now. Please, I want you to go to the Politocrat Daily Podcast online store because there's so much there waiting for you. So much. T-shirts, hats. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And then you've got hoodies and pens and mugs. Oh my goodness me, it just never ends. I mean, you can get lost in there. You really can. So much more. Drinkware. Socks. That's right, socks. I mean, if you want to get fitted and kitted, this is the place to be. The Politocrat Daily Podcast online store. Shop there right now at the dash politocrat dot my shopify dot com that's the dash politocrat dot my shopify dot com thank you for your support welcome to the politocrat I'm Omar Moore it is Sunday May the 23rd 2021. On this edition of The Politocrat, technology, apps that track you, your privacy. Do you care about any of it? Plus, sports, sports, and more sports. Throughout this weekend, it has been a sports extravaganza. And if you like sports, you'll like this episode of The Politocrat. I think. Coming up next. Everybody is indeed a star. Everybody is a star. Sly and the Family Stone. Welcome to this edition of the Politocrat Daily Podcast. I am Omar Moore, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much for your time on this Sunday, May 23rd, 2021, or whenever you may be listening to this. Your listening ear and your time is so appreciated by yours truly. I really do appreciate you. And respect you and respect your time. You could be doing all kinds of other things um, in your busy life. And I'm just really thankful that you're listening to me. (laughs) No, I really am. I am very thankful to all of you who uh, spend part of your day, your time listening. So thank you very much. And I have uh, given away the uh, book and also the Blu-ray I Am Not Your Negro and we'll be doing this again um, down the road to say thank you to you for your listening ear and for your time. So 
Thank you. Thank you and a thank you. I hope you are faring well on this Sunday, that you're feeling good, that you are as healthy as you can be. Um, Health is so very important. I talk about it a lot here. For those of you who are relatively new listeners, I do stress the importance of getting checkups, the importance of, if you are in the United States in particular, signing up for more affordable health care at healthcare.gov. And that particular website is available for sign up for more affordable health care until August the 15th, 2021. But do not wait. Um, if you are someone who does not have health insurance and you are in the United States, please be sure to sign up for affordable health care, more affordable health care at healthcare.gov. Checkups are so very important. And self-examinations are very important, not just the introspection and the mental examinations that you may or may not do, but the physical examinations that are self-examinations. And I've talked about them before here, whether it is you're in the shower, you're feeling for lumps or bumps, whether they be in your breasts for self-examination, in your testicles. I mean, these are really important things. And I know that you won't get a lot of political or politically oriented types of podcasts talking about this. You just won't. You will not. You'll get it on health. Hopefully you'll get it on health um, podcasts and um, you will hear that kind of language being spoken, but you will not hear it by and large on the podcast episodes you listen to that are more politically themed and This would count as one of those podcasts, but it would not count as a podcast where you do not hear me say anything about health and the importance of self-examinations, checking yourself on a daily basis, whether you're in the shower, whether you're in the bath. Please, please do this. It's so important. Early detection means everything. Early detection is a life saver. So please, everybody. I I say this because it's very important. I say this because it can save your life. Early detection is critical. I don't care how old or young you are. I don't care what your age is. You should be doing this from your 20s onwards. Seriously. You should be doing self-examinations on a daily basis. You really should. A daily basis. And it makes all the difference in the world. What we tend to do, we as in the general we, tend to do is wait, or not just not wait, but we don't become as rigorous in self-examinations where health is concerned as we do, say, in our looks in improving the way we look or the way we feel. But we don't necessarily, you know, we might spend a lot of money on going to the barber, going to the hairdresser, getting that pair of jeans that you've wanted to get for six months now, getting that sports item or that shirt or that hat or that dress or that pair of shoes or that swimwear or that comfortable sweatpants item, that, that sweats, you know, the sweatsuits or whatever it might be, sweat tops, sweatshirts, sweatpants, but we won't spend any time examining ourselves in the shower. Seriously, I mean, that happens. And, or we won't spend a trip going to the doctor, some of us. We must do these things. I know there are some people among us, we may not like to do these kinds of things. We may be afraid of what might be found. We may be afraid that, oh my goodness, you know, I don't have health care. So therefore, if you're in the United States, this is what we say here. You know, 
you may you may say, well, you know, I live here in the U.S. I don't have health care. I, you know, goodness gracious, if they find something, it's going to be lots of money to to deal with all of this. And I just don't have that money. You know, that's the kind of thing that people say here in this country, which tells you about the pathetic state of affairs with health care. Although it's not pathetic for the health care companies because they make billions of dollars. But my whole point here is, is that self-examinations, early detections, early screenings for cancers, for all these things, are worth it. And we will, my point was is that we will go and do all these other things, but we won't. And I mean, we will not go to the doctor and we won't do these early examinations. And then down the line, there will be these strange pains and these strange things going on. And then it becomes impossible to ignore because now you really can't do anything without feeling a certain pain. And then you are compelled to go to a doctor or to an emergency room. Some people at that point in the United States still will not go to an emergency room. And some of those people end up dying because of all of these things. Health is so important. We must and you must get checkups. Early detection saves lives. And it may just save your life. So please, detect, protect, and save your life. Howlin' Wolf there, one of the great legends of blues. Oh, man, Howlin' Wolf. It, it, that unmistakable voice. And if you're a blues fan, as am I, and I haven't played a lot of blues tunes um, during the course of this podcast over the last year plus, but I really will be doing more of that. Um, yeah, look, the, the blues is essential. It's essential music. It really is essential. And Howlin' Wolf is one of the greats of all time. And there's so many others, Muddy, Mississippi Waters and Robert Johnson from back in the day. And I mean, my goodness me, there's so many people. I know I've forgotten some more recently, Buddy Guy. Um, but I, I'm talking about the the other, the legends that came before Buddy Guy, who is still with us, thank goodness. Um, Howlin' Wolf, um, just uh, one of the greats. One of the greatest of all time. And that line, go to sleep, was not a coincidence. I played that very deliberately, having spoken about sleep just a few moments ago. Well, welcome back. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of the Political Politocrat Daily Podcast. I am indeed Omar Moore on this Sunday. Well, I still am Omar Moore on this Sunday. I don't plan for that to change anytime soon. Um... But I, I, um, I want to say thank you uh, to you for listening uh, on this day, May 23rd, 2021, or whenever you're listening to this edition of the Politocrat Daily Podcast. So one of the two topics that I wanted to talk about was privacy. Now, look, I've, I've talked about privacy before. It's not the first time. I'm not making a debut here on this subject, but privacy is critical. If we don't have privacy, who are we? If we if we don't have the ability to have our own thoughts, which we do have still, thank God. Um, but if we don't have the ability to, to have a safe haven 
of our own, in our own homes or in our own dwellings or whichever structure that we may live in. Who are we? Are we even human beings at that point? Well, obviously we're human beings. But what I'm saying is, is that we are not afforded the dignity of being human and what comes with being human. And what if we don't have privacy? And one of the things that comes with being human is privacy. And quite frankly, it's not so much that we don't have privacy anymore. It's that we have intrusion on a daily basis. And I think if we reframed the conversation in that way, if we reframed, reframed, the analysis in that way, I think it would force more of us to do an examination. Or maybe it wouldn't. Maybe people would go, well, I don't care anyway. But perhaps it would force an examination. Intrusions? Then you start to put the onus on the entities and persons and companies who are doing those intrusions daily, 24 hours a daily, on your life, into your life. Your phone, your apps, your internets, your TVs, your cable box. Oh, no, I'm not trying to at all put paranoia in your mind or even express or project it. I am speaking of instruments and instrumentalities that are very much a part of your daily life. Now, there are some people who do not have televisions, which is a really good idea because then you'll see less of this and don't have internets and access to internets and online access and internet capability. So that's a really good thing that you don't have that. The flip side of that is, is that how are you connected to the world around you. If you don't have a television and you don't have internet access and you don't have a laptop and still there's millions of people who don't have any of those things I've just mentioned, then how are you tuned into what's going on around you? Do you read the newspapers? Not that the newspapers are always the most um, reliable. I mean, newspapers are more reliable. Come on, I mean, still, as much as I complain about the New York Times, the reporting is still very damn good in the New York Times. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, what I don't like about the New York Times, as I've probably said a billion times to bore you to tears, is the framing of stories, is the laziness in the way the phraseology is used to talk about issues, the trivialization. That's what I don't like. And then some of the management at the New York Times is piss poor. I've criticized Dean Baquet a million times. And it didn't start with Dean McKay. Dean McKay being, I think, the first black editor-in-chief of the New York Times or, or what his, the, the executive of the New York, CEO or whatever, uh, of the New York Times. So it didn't start with him. It's continuing with him. And I've criticized the people before Dean McKay. B-A-Q-U-E-T is his last name. And so I, I've, I've been very critical of the New York Times and other newspapers around this. So... My point is, if you don't have any access, but the New York Times still does some good stories and useful stories. In fact, I'm going to be reading from one in a moment, which is really an advice story that is, I think you'll find immensely helpful. But if you don't have access to these things, where do you get your information from? You're not listening to the radio still. And the chances are, unless you are in a dwelling, in your home, with a, an old stereo system or a wireless radio. You can't be listening to radio unless you've got a phone that allows you to listen to it with apps on it. It's a whole intrusion. It's not that your privacy, well, obviously your privacy is under attack, but it's not so much that, oh, you don't have privacy anymore. Even I've said this before. It's not so much that we don't have privacy and that may be empirically, that empirically may be true. But what it is, is that we are being intruded upon. I mean, that's really what it is. We are being intruded upon by apps, by the phones, by the internets, by everything. That it's an intrusion by these 
corporations who and these companies that own these apps, these advertisers that advertise on apps, on your internets, you click on something and cookies, not the ones that are chocolate chip, not the ones that are mint, not the ones that are got cashews or whatever. That What do you buy? Cashews and cookies. I don't know. I don't eat cookies, so I wouldn't know. You know, macadamia, whatever. You do, Not those kind of cookies. Cookies that track every freaking move you make on the internet. And it's an intrusion. It's not so much. Yes, it is your privacy. It's obviously up for sale and up for grabs, for lack of a better terminology. But it's your, you're being intruded upon, dear listener. Uh, there's a great ad right now. It's it's the best ad I've seen this year. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of television. They don't watch a lot of TV, except for, of course, some good movies and, of course, sports stuff. Wow, well, dear, oh, dear. I mean, geez, me and sports is inseparable, um, among other things. Um, lots of interest. Sports is definitely one of them. Playing them and actually watching them as well whether live or on television or whatever. But the point is, is that I that I saw this ad just yesterday. It was really good ad from Apple. Have you seen it? Um, I don't know if it's showing in other countries, but it's certainly showing here in the United States. The Apple ad about privacy, about being tracked. And there's this young brother who's sitting there and he has gone to a, presumably a Starbucks, but it's, a coffee place, and, you know, at least I read that to be Starbucks. And so he goes in this generic coffee place. He gets coffee, and the person who served it to him says, thank you, and that will be something, something from last Tuesday or whatever. And it's odd, he's talking about last Tuesday. And he follows, follows the guy who, the brother who bought the uh, coffee or whatever it was, into the car that he, or the cab he hails or whatever. And he sits next to him. So this is the guy who sold the, or the barista, the barista who sold, who prepared the coffee or sold it to this young brother. And he gets into the cab with him and moves alongside him. And he starts quoting something to him. Then there's another person that gets in the cab. And then sooner or later, he goes to another place And there are all these people following him. It's creepy as you know what. And they're following him down the street and he's walking. Then he goes home or goes to work or whatever home. He goes home and you've got 50 people in his house. And they're all looking in his books and looking at him and everything he does. They're looking over his shoulder. And it says app tracker. Do you want to track this? And he clicks on something that says no. And then all these people in his apartment or his home disappear, poof, in a cloud of dust. It's really powerful. It's funny, but it's a good ad, including the guy who jumped in the car with him in the first place that he sold, who sold the coffee to him. It's a really good ad. If you've ever seen that ad, I'm sure it's online on YouTube, on Apple's YouTube channel, if they have one. That is a great ad. It's kind of a little creepy, but it's really good. And it's a good way of illustrating this idea about privacy. And Apple says, well, you know, we um, stop privacy. We we, we want to preserve you. The whole theme of the ad is Apple wants to preserve your privacy. And there is something, by the way, if you have an iPhone that you can do. And this is where I bring the New York Times in. Thorin Klosowski, T-H-O-R-I-N, last name K-L-O-S-O-W-S-K-I. Thorin Klosowski, who is a reporter for Wirecutter, I guess that's a New York Times, that's a, a feature on the New York Times, has written this, I think, very helpful thing here called How Your iPhone Apps Are Tracking You. And I think it's a good thing. It's very, if you look at it, it's a very clear, and it's done on from May 20th, 2021, very clear look at what you can do to prevent these companies from intruding upon you as much as they do. 
So I want to read this, and I think the Apple ad is a really good ad. That ad is the best ad I've seen on television this year, here in 2021. It's a persuasive ad. It's funny. It's a little creepy. But it brings the point home about Apple doing what it can to try to protect privacy. And Apple puts a lot of these apps that track you anyway on their app store. But at the same time, they also tell you how to reduce a lot of this. So Torin Klosowski wrote this and he writes, if you've updated your iPhone's iOS, and I have, have you? I think it's 14.5 now. You may have noticed a pop-up asking to, quote, track your activity upon opening an app. I have. To learn just what these apps are doing, I read 250 app store labels. Here's what to know. So you click on this. This is kind of like this pictorial that accompanies uh, Mr. Klosowski's uh, story here. And the next slide that comes up, he says, in the App Store, and there is a drawing to illustrate this too, and I can't really convey the drawing, um, but I'm going to read the words. And he continues on. Thorin continues, in the App Store, an app's privacy section is broken into three categories. Data used to track you, which gets shared across apps. Data linked to you, which is collected by the app but not shared. And data not linked to you such as crash data. Next slide, please. I sound like the, I sound like the, <laughs> I sound like the people at uh, 10 Downing Street who do their um, press conferences in the evenings, um, or maybe the CDC. Um, and Thorin continues, of the apps with a data used to track you label, which is about two thirds of the apps, 96% of those apps used identifiers such as device or user ID. 70% measured advertising data, i.e. which ads you clicked on. 38% used location. And 19% used contact info, typically an address. So there's a graphic that's next to that, what I just read out and, you know, the pictorial representations of the percentages of the identifiers and usage data, location, and contact info. Now, if you have, and I'm, this is just me speaking now, not Thorin. If you have um, location services on your phone, turn them off. If you are someone who does care about being tracked, turn that stuff off. The downside to that is that you don't get these weather apps or these weather forecasts being as accurate perhaps or or at least not accurate being centered to your location and if you don't care about that then good then please uh, you know don't let these companies intrude on you that's what they're doing it's an intrusion it's not so much that your privacy and your privacy is being taken from you but it's but we when we examine it like that it's passive language who is taking your privacy from you? What is taking your privacy from you? Which cut? See, that's the thing that doesn't get focused on. Whereas if you say you are intruded upon, you are being intruded upon, then hopefully the natural tendency in your brain is to say, well, who is tr- intruding upon me? By whom? Who am I being intruded on by? Who is intruding on me? And then you put the focus on the people and the companies who are doing that. I think this story by uh, Torin Klosowski is really good. And I'm going to continue on here. He says that weather apps, and I just talked about the weather, are notorious for selling location information. Of the 20 weather apps we looked at, 17 of them indicated that they track devices for advertising purposes and 14 of those used location information to track devices. I just talked about location, location services. You need to turn that off. If you are not 
hell bent on or interested in having weather forecasts for your very zip code and exactly where you're standing at this very second in time, wherever you're sitting or wherever you're lying down at this second, then turn it off. Turn off the location services. It's really easy. (laughs) The high-pitched voice. It's really easy to do. And I will, um, through this article, and I can tell you now, but I just want to read this article and, and Thorin will tell you how that's done in case you are not aware of how to turn this off. Thorin continues, typically paid apps collect less data than their F-R-E-E, free counterparts do. And those free counterparts, Thorin points, points out, make money through embedded ads. Of the top 20 F-R-E-E, free games of 2020, 19 of them stated in their privacy labels that they gather user data. So if you are downloading apps that are free of charge, you better believe you are downloading data that is going to track you. You are downloading companies who are going to track your movements online and sell your information. Now, if you don't mind being sold, if you don't mind that kind of thing, then step right up, step right up. But if you're someone who has a problem with your information, your habits, your movements online, and your personal information being sold, then you really need to disable, or I should say, um, turn off these hideous things that are tracking you. Thorin continues, there are things you can do to minimize tracking on your device. And here we are, the, the piece of it all here. And he tells you, as I was going to tell you, but he tells you, if you have an iPhone, he says, disable tracking on your iPhone or iPad. And you do this by going to settings. You click on settings and then you go to privacy. And then where you open up privacy, there's the part that that says tracking. And you will see it at the top of your phone. Tracking. You click on that. And then you want to turn off, or as he puts it, disable the allowing apps or allow apps to request to track. You want to turn that off right away. And I'm actually looking at it now on the iPhone I have. I, like many of you, have an iPhone. Um, I don't know about Android. And, and, and if you have an Android, perhaps there's a way to do this as well. I'm not aware of how. Um, I guess you could do some research on this uh, on online. But If you have an iPhone, then this will obviously be of help to you if you care. I hope you do. You go to general as, um, well, I'm going to general. Um, Well, actually, you don't go to general. You go to general. (laughs) Actually, what am I talking about? I'm in settings already. (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, gosh. So I'm, I'm in settings. You know where settings is on your iPhone. So you click on that. It's that gear wheel. It kind of looks like a gear. Um, in gray, that icon, that app, that icon. And you click on that, and then you scroll down to where it says privacy. And privacy, to the left of that, will have a white hand in a blue background. You click on the privacy area, and at the very top, it says location services. Now, location services should be turned off. Unless you're using it for a particular app. And if you are using it for a particular app, say in my case for sports, make sure you say location services should be on only when using the app. Because it does give you that option. And the reason why sports apps use location services is because they want to make sure that you are someone who is able to see content in the proper geographic region and not be able to see content in other regions of the world where you're not authorized to. That's what that's about. And without that app being on, you won't be able to see pretty much much of anything. 
I mean, you will see some things, but you may also be preventing yourself to seeing content that you need to see. But at the top, you will see location services. Below that, you'll see the word tracking. You want to click on tracking and you will see that it says, once you click on it, allow apps to request to track. Now, what you need to do, if you don't want apps to request to track you, you want to make sure that that white dot is on the left and not showing green. If you have a white dot and there's a green space there, that means those apps are going to be requesting to track you. You want to turn that off if you care enough about it. So what you will see and what you should see is a white dot and a dark charcoal gray space to the right of that white dot. If that is what you see, you have turned off that function and that function will not allow any tracking and it won't ask you if you would like to be tracked. And who would like to be tracked? I, I mean, apart from having followers on Twitter and I have them at the popcorn, R-E-E-L, do you want to be followed? Do you want your every move? See, if someone was following you down the street, that's why this Apple ad is so good. Because it literally depicts people following this young man down the street. Hundreds of them. And like I say, it's kind of like, it's, you know, it's very creepy. It's like Night of the Living Dead. These people are fo- hundreds of people following him down the street. And he's kind of a, somewhat oblivious to them in some ways. And in other ways, not. But this is a really important thing. It really is. And then Thorin Klosowski continues on. Apps made by Facebook or Google. Ha ha ha. Facebook or Google. Collect a huge amount of data about your behavior. Consider avoiding apps from tech behemoths or use their services in your browser instead. I would say avoid both of those companies as much as you can. And I'm going to add something to what Thorin has said as well, in addition to what I've just said, which is if you really do care about this subject and you don't want to be intruded upon, you know, the whole thing about the United States in particular You're the right to be left alone. You know, the libertarian, the right to be left alone, you know, but yet you consent to having all these companies tracking you and intruding upon you. You know, it's like, give me a, oh, but you know, the right to be left alone, you know, don't tread on me, you know, all this nonsense. And yet you don't mind the corporations treading on you and following you and tracking every move and intruding upon you. It's like, oh no, there's no hypocrisy here. There's no contradiction here, is there? God dear. So my thing is here. Do not use Google as your search engine. I know I have said the word Google. Go Google it. And, you know, I really shouldn't. Use something called Duck, Duck, Go. Duck as in the animal. Duck, Go. DuckDuckGo, that is a web browser, or I should say a search engine, that you can adjust your browser to. So that you don't have Bing, you don't have Google, you have a search engine that will not track you. It stops these companies from tracking you on your internets on your web browser. So I wouldn't be using Google, Facebook. They are the two worst companies. They, I mean, Chrome, that's the thing about having Google Chrome. The the blessing of it is, is that things do run really well generally on Google Chrome, not on Apple Safari. But the problem with Google Chrome is it tracks the you know what out of you. So a way to try to get around that as best as possible is to use the search 
engine duck duck go and you can set your web browser even if it is google chrome to the default uh to be you can set the default to be duck duck go and not google because duck duck go does not collect your information and does not track you it makes a huge difference it really does makes a huge difference. And there's a way to do this. There's a way to go in and go to your settings, go in and go into your security and site settings and all the rest of it. Um, These things get blocked. I mean, it's really good. And you can set these things in Google Chrome, but, but, you know, you go into uh, Chrome and if you're on Apple, Or, well, actually, you go to Chrome and Preferences, and you can set all kinds of things in there. Uh, It makes a big difference. Your default browser, you can click on that, and, you know, you can make sure that you can change all these things so that they're not tracking you to death. They're not intruding upon you. And make sure that DuckDuckGo, and if you type in that word, DuckDuckGo.com, if you track that, if you type that word in, that's what you will get. And you you want to, you will get DuckDuckGo as a page. And there is an opportunity, best of my knowledge, to set that as your default search engine. It's really good so that any search that you do is not tracked on DuckDuckGo. It's a really good one. I've been using DuckDuckGo now for a long time. And it's a really good way of searching for whatever you want to search for and seeing less cookies popping up. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't track the cookies. It doesn't do that. It eliminates that. And it's very, very good. And so you're not seeing all these things. And the only time you will see things, if, if you do click on ads, you're going to see all these ads because they're tracking your activity. It's a way for them to make more money, them being the corporation companies, make more money off of you. So I do want you to be really careful about these kinds of things if you care about them. I mean, I really think it's important. And I think Torin Klozowski, I think has done a really good, has done a good service here, excuse me. And telling people to, Really be careful about the kinds of things they're downloading. The kinds of... I mean, then people wonder why there's all this identity theft. Then people wonder why there's all these viruses. Have a... Please get a virus protection program on your computer. And I know some people are wary of that too because maybe they think that's going to track something. But again, better to be safer than sorrier. Better to be safer than sorry. Torin Klozowski continues on, Rev- review the apps, he says, you don't use. Review the apps you don't use and delete them. You might have dozens of old apps just sitting there selling your data. For anything new you download, scrutinize the privacy label to know what the app will do with your data. I think that's good advice. The only thing is, is that most of us, the vast majority of us, do not have the time to scrutinize the privacy labels. Why? Because they're about 25 pages long, if not more. Sometimes less, sometimes more. And people just aren't going to sit there and read all of that. Furthermore, a lot of it is legal ease. And unless you're an attorney, like yours truly, it is going to be a heck of a read for you. And it's a heck of a read for me. As someone in the legal profession, it's a heck of a read. I don't sit there and read all that. Who wants to? I got stuff to download, or I got stuff to watch, or I've got stuff to do. I've got stuff to read, or write. I don't have the time to sit here. And I've got this stuff to do. I don't have the time to sit here and read 25 pages of legalese. And the average person does not have that time. And the average person just says, oh, I'll just sign off on it. It's like when they put this contract in front of you in a store. You've just purchased a new phone. 
and the the fin- the fine print is so fine you can barely see it and it's a good page or two long maybe five and it's all in font 6 <laughs> the size is like size 6 font which is really small and they say right sign here and before covid you'd have this contract put in front of you and you just sign it you're not going to sit there for 15 20 minutes and read every part of it half an hour you're not you're not you're going to just sign it and therefore you're going to sign away all of whatever rights or things that that contract is taking away from you that's the way it goes this is how these companies do what they do here's the next thing that Torin says well actually he doesn't say anything more that's 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 the end of it but I I found that to be very helpful. And I want to thank um, Torin Klazowski um, for writing that for Wirecutter on the New York Times from May 20th, 2021. Really very helpful indeed. And so my question becomes, after hearing all of that from Torin and from myself, do you care? Richard, Wired for Sound. Oh, I love that tune. Oh, man, there we go. Cliff Richard, one of the greats. I love Cliff. I love, if I could say his name on this episode, it would be helpful. Cliff Richard. Oh, man, one of the, you know, he's been around and it's just great to know you've still got great legends around, you know? Of all the people we talk about, and I've talked about here, who are no longer here, and I know that <laughs> if Sir Cliff were listening, um, I don't know if he'd appreciate the way I'm talking about this. Using the word still is not good. <laughs> and using mentioning him in conjunction with people who are no longer here, that probably is disconcerting too. Um, I think the best way to say this is that it's so great to have Cliff Richard <laughs> here. And uh, he has just done excellent things throughout this great career that he enjoys today. And he's as good now as he was in the 1950s when he was with the Shadows. People forget Cliff Richard was with the Shadows. He was part of the Shadows. Then, he, I mean, then he did his own thing. In the 60s, we were all going on a summer holiday. And then he went on into great stuff in the 70s and the 80s. I mean, Cliff Richard, man. And a career that continues. It's just fantastic. Cliff, wherever you are, keep on keeping on. It's just so good to um, to know that you're in the world. It really is, man. You're You're one of the one of the great people, one of the good people out here and done a lot for charities and is a good person. There were some really nasty attacks on him by the BBC. Uh, it was just absolutely ridiculous. Well, again, I talked about the BBC the other day. Uh, the BBC is an absolute trash bucket, um, you know, scum bucket is what it is. And yeah, they, uh, I'm not for uh, getting rid of the BBC, but I am for gutting the BBC of its anti, you know, that it, of its pro-Tory bias, of its horrible uh, journalistic ethics, because it doesn't have any uh, half the time. Um, you know, there are some good people there and good reporters there. And I do like some of the people there and think they are actually people who have some integrity. But there's a lot of scumbags at the BBC, just like there are in all walks of life, right? You know, just like everything, like at your workplace, there's some good people and there's some scum buckets. <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? Life is like that. There's a really good people, 
that you love and you trust or you like and respect or whatever, and they're decent and you're just so thankful to have them as people you love or your friends or whatever, and then you've got scumbags. <laughs> That's the world. It's just the way it is. And so anyway, all of that is to say that the BBC, um, well, <laughs> scumbags, and, and uh, Cliff Richard, good person. Thank you very much for for um, for tuning in and listening to this edition of the Political Daily Podcast. I want to go on now to the second thing, the second story. Sports, sports extravaganza. I know it's purely selfish to say it, and I'm going to say it. If you are a sports fan like yours truly is, you will have loved these last 24 hours or so, last 48 actually, and certainly today. May the 23rd, a Sunday, 2021. You will love this. You will love this day. I can almost not speak because I am so excited about this sports day and about this sports weekend that we've been having. Boxing, tennis, golf, WNBA, football playoffs in England, La Liga in Spain, Bundesliga in Germany, Syria R, football in Italy, the NBA playoffs in the U.S., the NHL playoffs in the United States and Canada, and the Premier League finale games today, the last day of the 2020-2021 Premier League season, the race for top four, the race for the golden boot. Don't you just love it if you are a Premier League fan, wherever you are on the planet? This is a really good day. If you're a sports fan of any kind, this is a really good day today. You're going to have some really good things going on. There are really great things going on. Yesterday, it was the boxing, some phenomenal boxing matches. And I know a lot of people don't like boxing. A lot of people don't like it because it's corrupt. A lot of people don't like it because of the graphic and brutal violence. And a lot of people don't like it for both those reasons. And then there's a lot of people who love it. I would not say that I love boxing. I would say that I am a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the way boxers are treated. I'm not a, way, a fan of the way these promoters absolutely hustle and exploit a lot of these fighters. I'm not a fan of any of that. I am a fan of the artistry, if you want to call it that, of boxers and their strategy. And yes, it's violent. And yes, it's brutal. And I'm not here going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I am saying is I like to watch the way these boxers move in the ring and the way they do hit and the way they don't hit. And I'm not trying to prettify it or put a bow around it and justify my like for boxing in that respect. I'm not going to. I, I mean, I would rather when a fighter starts to get very violent, I would rather the fight be stopped. And sometimes referees or, or, or referees don't stop the fight in time. Sometimes the corners don't throw the towel in in time or they throw it in too early. But rather that than to find out 10, 15 years down the road that someone has CTE, that someone has Parkinson's, that someone can't speak anymore. And that's happened in bo- that someone is killed. And all of those things have happened in boxing in the ring or outside of it due to a very violent sport. But I shouldn't say the word, but boxing is, there is actually some artistry and technicality in boxing. I know that's a tough sell for most people listening. I would assume, although you know what assume does, it makes an ass out of you and me. But, but here we go again. There's boxing, tennis, the French Open's coming up. Coco Goff, who is, I think, really good. She won a tournament just before her, I think one of her first, well, she's won numerous tournaments, I'm sure. But she won a tournament before as a warm-up to the French Open, which is notoriously difficult to win the French Open. And the French Open's coming up within the next week or so. I think it's next a week from today, next Sunday or Monday or whatever. Right near the end of May. 
Then you have the golf. You've got the PGA Championship going on as I speak uh, on this particular uh, Sunday, May 23rd. Phil Mickelson in the lead, or he was in the lead. I don't know if that's changed by the time you listen to this, um, but maybe he will have won. Maybe he hasn't won. We'll find out who wins the PGA t- Championship. If you're a golf fan as I am, it is, it, it's a really fascinating day of sport. In England, the football playoffs, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the football playoffs, those of you who are fans of English football, as I am, obviously, uh, I would be. Well, it doesn't mean that because you're from England, you automatically have to like football. But I do. <laughs> and I am from England. So I, I, I've listen, I've lo- I love football for so long. I grew up playing it. And uh, I mean, it's on teams. Uh, I've watched it with Watford forever. Watford Football Club from England who are back in the Premier League as of August the 14th. Well, we were already in the Premier League uh, unofficially, but officially when the games begin for next season's Premier League on August the 14th, we will be one of those 20 teams. But you had the football playoffs yesterday in England in the Championship League where Watford were just promoted from last month, and there were two phenomenal games that were played. That was exciting. And, you know, if you like Brentford, Brentford versus uh, Bournemouth, and then there was Swansea versus Barnsley, that may mean nothing to most of you listening. But to those of you who are uh, big fans of English football, it means a heck of a heck of a lot. It really does. La Liga. Atletico Madrid won the La Liga title yesterday in Spain. Second time they've won, I think, in the last five years or so, last four years or so. First time ever that Real Madrid went an entire season without winning any kind of trophy whatsoever. They've not had that happen in 11 years until just yesterday. Atletico Madrid, by the way, had an unfortunate, very sad thing happen. One of their fans died. I don't know what the details are, but one of their fans, apparently a young young lad, young boy, young person, young man, I think, um, died, and I don't know how. I don't know if it was during the course of the celebrations, if the person had a heart attack or if something happened, whatever. You know, it's very, very sad. So that was a very sad thing that happened yesterday. You had the Bundesliga in Germany. You had the Serie A football in Italy. The NBA playoffs got underway yesterday and they're continuing today. Really exciting games yesterday. You had the late game. Denver against Portland. Oh my gosh, what a game that was. Portland winning on the road in Denver. A mild surprise, but really when you look at that game as I did, not a big, big surprise. A very, very, I mean, then you had the game before that was Boston at the, the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn, after a slow start, ended up prevailing there. You had um, the game before that being uh, Los, Los Angeles Clippers against the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks winning in Los Angeles. No surprise there. I felt that Dallas was going to win, and I think they're going to win that series. Before that, you had Milwaukee hosting Miami. A really close game that went to overtime. Milwaukee prevailing, but I was not impressed with Milwaukee. So you've got all that going on, and if that wasn't enough, you've got the WNBA. WNBA in its second or third week of action. Really exciting games in the Seattle Storm are the team to watch. Brianna Stewart, Sue Bird and company. These folk, these play, they're invincible. The C, Pretty much, the Seattle Storm. Who's going to stop the storm? You, me, us? I don't think so. Brianna Stewart, by the way, one of the very best players in the WNBA. And when she played in college in uh, Connecticut at UConn under Gino Oriama. She was player of the year. I mean, she is just brilliant. Is there anything she can't do in the basketball court? Just phenomenal player. Brianna Stewart is probably the best player in the WNBA. And those of you who are WNBA fans can take issue with me if you want. But there are few people in the WNBA who are better than she at the game of basketball right now. I mean, just terrific. Uh, And they won a championship, the Seattle Storm. I think just last season. And they're trying to defend it now. I think they won it last season. 
And by the way, the WNBA having its 25th year anniversary, that's what you call an anniversary. The WNBA, Women's National Basketball Association. Notice they don't have a Men's National Basketball Association. They just call it NBA. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So the WNBA has been around now for 25 years, and that's a great thing. And may we have many, many, many more years of the WNBA. And we need more support for the WNBA. I've got to add that. We need more support for the WNBA from men and from women, but from men in particular. I can say that I've seen WNBA games. I've gone to a WNBA finals. And it's great basketball. It's great basketball. The ladies on court put on a show. These are committed players. I spoke to a footballer last week. And, 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 and she's from Watford Women. Addie Fatugadada. Now, Addie is a really good footballer. And I've seen... I think it's a video, I think it's on YouTube, the uh, Watford Women's uh, YouTube. I think they have a YouTube page. And I remember seeing uh, some vid. I mean, Addie works really hard. And and we talked about this. I talked about this with her. Um, Dedicated. And you have to be dedicated. If you want to be the best at what you do, I don't care what walk of life you're in. You got to work for it. You got to work bloody hard. To get to that point. And obviously, for a lot of us, it ain't coming easy. Because then we're facing discrimination. We're facing racism. We're facing all these things. And we busted our asses. And in a great many cases, five times harder than our white counterparts. Or our male counterparts. And then we don't get looked at. We don't get recognized. We don't get seen. We don't get acknowledged. So we're busting our humps. And whether it's Addy, whether it's Brianna Stewart, any of these athletes, whether it's Harry Kane or Mo Salah or any of the Coco Goff, Simone Biles, Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Candace Parker. These folks are busting it. They don't sit around, folks. And in any walk of life, I don't have people working three jobs in the U.S. Four jobs. Do you think they're sitting around? They're busting their rear ends to make sure that food's on the table for their kids, a roof over their head. Yeah, you know, here in the United States, we have to work three or four jobs. (laughs) Some of us do. I shouldn't say we as in general, because that's not true of lots of people. Including myself. But lots of people have to work Four jobs, three jobs, as George W. War Criminal Bush once said to someone at a town hall. It's uniquely American. And he didn't mean that like it wasn't a compliment. He actually meant that as a compliment. But there's nothing to compliment about that. But the whole thing is, back to my whole point, what a sports day, what a sports weekend. If you are a sports fan, I hope you've been enjoying this weekend. It has been sensational so far. And more is on the way. These NBA playoffs today, my New York Knicks, best, all the best to them as they take on Atlanta in round number one. The NHL playoffs have been absolutely astounding to watch. Overtime games, double overtime games. Really thrilling conclusions to games. 
such drama in the NHL playoffs. The best playoffs of the lot are the NHL playoffs because of the drama of them, how dramatic they really are. It's phenomenal. The Premier League finale, you know, the last game being played today in the Premier League. I mean, this is all excitement. Match week 38. The final week, in fact, the final day of the season in the Premier League is today. And we will see who finishes in the top four. Now, for those of you who don't care about this, you can plug your ears for the next minute or two. But for those of you who do care, listen up. Because you have an opportunity to see which one or which two of these three teams are going to be in the top four and finish there today. It's going to be between Leicester, Liverpool and Chelsea. Or I should say more accurately, Chelsea, Liverpool and Leicester because that is three through five right now as the day begins to play the Premier League games on this final day of the season, Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. We will see what happens today. Chelsea are at Aston Villa. Liverpool host Crystal Palace. And Leicester City host Tottenham Hotspur. In two of those games, there was also a golden boot race, which means whomever scores the most goals in a season gets the golden boot. Not the golden boot up the backside, but the golden boot as an award. And right now, Mo Salah, who I mentioned a few moments ago, and Harry Kane, who I also mentioned a few minute, moments ago, both sit on 22 goals in the Premier League this season. Now, if it finishes tied, they both share that award for the season. And no, they both get golden boot award trophies they don't get the golden boot replicas they don't get half a golden boot they can get the whole thing but if one of them pulls ahead of the other there that person will get the golden boot and it will be between one of those two players and both of them play key games today so there's a lot on the line for the top four everything else has been settled Manchester City are your champions The relegated teams this season were decided three weeks ago, which is very unusual for it to be decided that early. Um, Two weeks ago, really, in earnest. Um, Sheffield United had been relegated three months ago. And in late February or early, early March, I think it was. And the other two teams, Fulham and then, excuse me, West Brom, West Bromwich Albion and Fulham were relegated in the last two weeks or so. So... That's all been done and dusted and the title race is over with. It's just which teams are going to finish in the top four. Manchester City obviously are going to finish in the top four. Manchester United obviously are going to finish in the top four. They are going to be runners up. And then it's which of those three teams I mentioned, be it Chelsea, Liverpool or Leicester, are going to finish number three and number four. So it's going to be two teams from those three that will fill out that top four. All that stuff to me is exciting. I know, for some of you, you don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> I hear you 100%. Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Steve Oisfeld all score the bout 114-112 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now... The undisputed junior welterweight champion of the world, Josh the Tartan Tornado Taylor! Welcome back. Finally, I want to talk about someone who I watched at the WNBA Finals many moons ago now. And it was a game in New York City at Madison Square Garden between... It was the WNBA Finals 
game one between the New York Liberty and the Houston Comets. I had a court side seat. I absolutely loved it. Now, the New York Liberty, who I was rooting for, did not win. The Houston Comets were too good, and they were great that season. This is back in 1999, I think it was. They were great that year. They were great for a number of years. and They won numerous WNBA titles. They ended up winning the WNBA title in 1999. Cynthia Cooper, whom I regard as the greatest WNBA player ever, was right there playing the game. I just absolutely, I really liked her, even though I was rooting for the New York Liberty, who had some good players on it uh, back in the day, Becky Hammond, who is now an assistant coach at the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA and, and became the first female to coach a, an NBA professional game. And that happened just this season, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was this season. Um, so she made history. Becky Hammond was a good player, too, in her day. She played for the Liberty. Sue Wicks played for the Liberty and a number of other players. I remember those two in particular. Uh, and there were a, a couple of others that were also... I remember as well. Just don't remember their names at the moment. But it was it was Cynthia Cooper. Oh, the Houston Comets. And they're no longer a franchise in the WNBA, which is sad. But the Houston Comets were so good. And Cynthia Cooper, oh, she was just absolutely magnificent on the court. And a good person. And being that the WNBA has its 25th anniversary and we need to support the WNBA. Men in particular need to. Many, many more men and women too. The sport is a great sport and there are good people in it and even if they weren't good people in it, the WNBA is a good place. A lot of great activism comes out of the WNBA. It really does care. The organization does care. Um, Renee Montgomery, what a trailblazer she is. So many other people there. They need your support, really. And we really should um, oblige that and do that. Because we support the men's game. The NBA, right? I just talked about the NBA playoffs. I mentioned the WNBA too. But we need to support the WNBA. We really do. We need to make that part of our vocabulary. And not only make it part of our vocabulary, but when we are all vaccinated, we need to go back to these arenas um, when it is safe to do so, and go, and I know there are some fans coming back already, but support the WNBA. It should be supported. Cynthia Cooper tells a story about how she got to where she is now. And though she's no longer playing in a professional capacity, she is now in the Hall of Fame, in Naismith Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame. I want you to listen to this. Um, This is from her Twitter page. Um, And it's a video that she put up for the Players Tribune. And Cynthia Cooper, who is now Cynthia Cynthia Cooper Dyke. And she got married. um, I don't know when it was. But the point is, is that she's just so good. You know, I have literally just followed her on Twitter and her handle is all decade 14 at all. That's at the at sign, of course, a double L decade. And then the number one four. Please go and follow her on Twitter. Cynthia Cooper, a great competitor and a great person. I'm going to play this to you now. This is, um, About three minutes long, I guess. I don't know. Um, Listen to this from Cynthia Cooper. And let this serve as an inspiration and motivation for you. Brian and Cyan. I grew up in Watts, in the inner city, surrounded by gangs and drugs. Some bad things happened to me there. 
but everything I experienced, I learned from, and it made me tougher. My mom raised eight of us kids by herself, and she worked hard. It seemed like she worked for 24 hours when I was young. I slept in a bed with three other siblings. We never really knew if we were going to have a full meal each day. Before he left, my father beat me. He beat me a lot. After he left, I was molested by another man. Those things hurt me. For a long time, they hurt me. But I had too much to accomplish to let that decide who I am. When I started playing basketball, the boys wouldn't let me play. I had to get my brother to come to the playground and then pick me on his team in order to play. That just made me tougher because I grew up with those guys telling me, you got to deal with this stuff if you want to play. But I knew I had to work hard because I saw my mother work so hard for all of her kids. She was a leader and she taught me how to lead and not settle for less. She taught me if I work hard, good things will happen. I don't want you to think that I had some unique journey. I'm not a unique person. My journey is everyone's journey. Everybody has obstacles. It's how you approach those obstacles that help to form your character and it helps to build you up. You don't have to be me. I want you to be the best version of you you can be. Whatever you choose to do, I hope you realize that there's no better feeling than achieving goals you set for yourself. You know, my mom didn't really get to see most of my professional career. I played so much overseas, and not long after the WNBA started in 1997, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. The first two championships we won with the Houston Comets, the ones she was alive for, my mom would go, look at you, look at you, and I would go, yeah, look at me, we're champions, and we would laugh and really have a great time. We were able to see together with all of our work, hers and mine's, and all of our perseverance that we could enjoy success. If anything, I hope my life can show you how commitment and respect is the fuel for love. If you have those two things, you will have success. Love, Mom. Wow, that was moving. Cynthia Cooper Dyke with words for her children. And let those words inspire you and motivate you as you go forward in this world that you are swimming around in, that we're all trying to find our bearings in. I really was moved by those words. And it shows us that we don't just start out at the top. If you have a silver spoon in your mouth, maybe you do. Yeah, you do. But for the 99% of us, including Cynthia Cooper Dyke, we have to bust our rear ends. Sacrifices get made by family members, by our parents. There is a school of hard knocks and traumatic lessons for many. As you heard there from Cynthia Cooper Dyke. And there is the hard work, the perseverance, the resilience amidst the adversity. And all the other things that build character. What kills us, they say, or I should say, what doesn't kill us, only makes us stronger. I want to thank Cynthia Cooper Dyke for those words, and I have retweeted that video on my Twitter account, at the popcorn R-E-E-L. And once again, Cynthia Cooper Dyke's Twitter handle is all decade. One four. That's all decade and the number 14. Please follow her on Twitter. Thank you, Cynthia. 
and I wish you and your children all the very best for all the days to come. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of The Politocrat. I am Omar Moore. Dear listener, dear listener, dear listener, you have to go right now. Please, I want you to go to the Politocrat Daily Podcast online store because there's so much there waiting for you. So much. T-shirts, hats. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And then you've got hoodies and pens and mugs. Oh my goodness me, it just never ends. I mean, you can get lost in there. You really can. So much more. Drinkware. Socks. That's right, socks. I mean, if you want to get fitted and kitted, this is the place to be. The Politocrat Daily Podcast online store. Shop there right now at the dash politocrat dot my shopify dot com that's the dash politocrat dot my shopify dot com thank you for your support <laughs>